Hey everybody, so let's take a look at what happened when two people, a carnivore and a vegan, took science into their own hands by swapping diets for 28 days. This is the experiment I've been waiting ages for. Chase on the left here has been vegan for 10 years for environmental and health reasons. And Joe on the right is a hardcore carnivore and works in construction. Both had the blood work examined before and after the experiment, so were able to see exactly how the 28 day diet swap affected them. So first up, let's hear from Joe, who had a few problems when he tried the vegan diet. I would eat about twice a day. I'd, I'd have a uh, coffee in the morning with uh, coconut oil in it. And then for lunch, it was typically fruits. It might've been apples with uh, nut butter. And then for dinner, it was when I would have typically you know, beans and rice, rice and beans, uh, sweet potato, um, stir fry with rice, stuff like that. Hold on a second. He just said he had two meals per day and one of those was nut butter and fruit. Is it any wonder that he would feel satisfied on a vegan diet? Of course not. At the same time, Vegan Chase was eating his meat-based carnivore meals and unsurprisingly, his body was struggling to process it. Yeah, two weeks in, I was about to negotiate an exit from this experiment. <laughs> um, I just wanted the, the, the carb energy back. I wanted to be able to eat a meal and get the almost instant energy because every meal took me, I don't know, 45 minutes to feel like okay, now I can kind of get up and go go do something. Toward the end, I just felt like I was, I was really uh, low on energy or just like my brain wasn't moving as quickly as I wanted it to. And uh, so I was really looking forward to the transition back. So on a carnivore diet, the vast majority of calories are from fat and protein. And this was reflected in Chase's daily intake. By mostly eliminating carbs from his body, Chase relied on the saturated animal fat as his primary energy source, which was probably a contributing factor to his fatigue throughout the month. But it's the blood results that paint the true picture of the two diets, with the two vitamins of contention, vitamin B12 and vitamin D, taking up the dietary debate. Now we know that vitamin D is difficult to obtain with all diets, especially in countries with lower amounts of sunlight, so both participant scores were below normal levels before and after the switch. We see a similar story with vitamin B12, but the carnivore diet saw Chase marginally increase his B12 levels as a result of ingesting the recycled supplement given to farmed animals. These results clearly show that regardless of your diet choice, vitamin D and vitamin B12 supplementation should be considered. It was also interesting to compare Joe and Chase's insulin levels. As you can see, on a carnivore diet, Chase's insulin levels went up, while Joe's went down on a plant-based diet, which is healthy. Their cortisol levels are also quite interesting. Cortisol is a measure of how stressed the body is, and Chase's uh, cortisol levels on the carnivore diet remained pretty stable, whereas Joe's reduced dramatically on the plant-based diet. So even though he didn't enjoy this way of eating, his body certainly did. Anyway, onto the next biomarker, IGF-1, which is really important when you're looking at cancer risk. Scientific studies have shown that diets rich in animal products are linked to raised levels of IGF-1, and the side-by-side -side results here reinforce that point. Chase's levels of IGF-1 increased while on the carnivore diet, whereas Joe's levels decreased when eating only plants. In this experiment, this factor alone could crown the vegan diet as the winner, in my opinion. Next, we look at C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation in the body. High levels indicate that somebody's got a sustained injury or just generally they're not very healthy. And from these results, we see Chase's levels decrease slightly from an already healthy baseline. But it's Joe's results that are interesting. His levels from his carnivore days were well above the safe range, but after adopting a plant-based diet, he saw them plummet, which was very revealing. Last but not least, let's look at cholesterol, which is very indicative as a health marker. And the results are really interesting. Chase's overall and LDL bad cholesterol shot up whilst on the carnivore diet, whereas Joe's reduced to healthy levels from a score significantly above the normal range. But what's kind of interesting is after the experiment concluded and irrespective of the results, Joe went back to his carnivore diet. Let's hear from Chase about his uh, desire to go back to the plant-based way of eating. Through the experiment, I just wanted to find out for myself if there's any any truth to the keto carnivore trend that's happening. And 
it, in a way, it sort of re reignited some of the 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 values that I had previously, especially now that veganism's gone mainstream with all the processed foods. You have to still be smart about what you're eating. Before we finish this video, I just wanted to highlight the fact that this was not a peer-reviewed study. It was just an experiment in a non-medically supervised way between two dudes on the internet. It was uh, organized by a guy called Drew Morg, who is a carnival vlogger, and the discussion was hosted on his channel. So if there is any bias, it was probably more skewed towards the meat-based end of the spectrum. Um, but the results are favorable to plant-based lifestyle, and they back up the copious amounts of uh, evidence-based information that uh, show the plants rule. But let me know what you think of the results. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, and follow for more videos like this. See you all soon.